Hello and welcome to a Talmud Israeli production. Today we will review the highlights of this week's course of Daf Yomi study, Masachet Psachim, pages 85 through 91. Hey, hey, through Tzadi Aleph. 85. Tanan Hatam. Ha Pigul Vahanotar Metaninate Adaim. If a person touches Pigul, invalidated sacrificial uh, foodstuffs, Vahanotar leftovers, their hands become impure. Now, this is a rabbinical decree because under Torah law, either one's whole body is impure or nothing is impure. But by rabbinical decree, a person's hands alone could be impure. And why did the sages make this decree? Rav Huna and Rav Chista explain, One reason is because of In the case of Pigul, we're concerned that a Kohen would intentionally invalidate someone's korban just to be malicious towards them. And so in order to prevent that, the sages declared that if you touch Pigul, your hands will be impure. Now, why would the Kohen care about impure hands if, in fact, he's so evil that he would maliciously destroy someone's korban? And the answer is because in those days, people took Tumah Vatara very, very seriously. Even those who were otherwise immoral would be reluctant to render their hands impure. And as for the notar leftovers, because of Atzle Kahuna, those who were lazy, that we want people who are Kohanim to finish eating the sacrificial meats that are their responsibility to eat in the right in the right time frame. And so if they don't, they'll render their hands impure as a punishment. Heva, 86. Abba Shaul Omer, Aliyat Beit Kodesh Kodashim, Hamur Mi Beit Kodesh Kodashim, that Abba Shaul said the sanctity of the upper story above the Holy of Holies in the temple is even greater than the sanctity of the main room downstairs of the Holy of Holies. How does he know this? That in the Holy of Holies, the high priest goes in there once every year. But as for the upper attic part of the Holy of Holies, they would only go in once every seven years, or maybe every twice every seven years, or maybe once in a jubilee. And why would they go at all? To know if there's any uh, need um, to fix any construction issue that has to be taken care of. So once in a blue moon, once in a very long while, they would go upstairs in the, in the, the attic of the Kachi Kadashim to see if they needed to do any repairs. Hey Zion, 87. Amar Rabbi Woe to those who hold authority, because holding authority ends up burying those who hold it. How so? Because we find a Navi Navi Kipach Arbamalachim Yamav that the prophets tended to outlive the kings. For example, Yeshayahu, he prophesied during the reigns of four kings, Uziah, Yotamah, and Chizkiah. Each one of those first three out of the four died before, you, uh, before Yeshayahu. We find this in modern times as well. A person who is a president of a country will often age prematurely, whether it's uh, President Clinton, President Bush, President Obama, all go into office as relatively younger looking men and go out horribly gray because it takes a lot out of, out of a person to uh, be a leader of a country. Hey, Chet, 88. Tan Rabbanan. Selabait. It says in the Torah, a uh, sheep for the household. To teach you that a person can slaughter the Korban Pesach on behalf of his minor children, son or daughter, or for his Canaanite servants. Whether with or, with or without their consent, he doesn't need to get approval from his children, minor children, or his Canaanite servants in order to do the Kuban Pesach for them. However, for adult children, you cannot do this. For Avdov Shivchato Evrim, or for Hebrew servants, by Dishto, for a wife, El Midatan, unless they consent, those people are, are adults and responsible for their own affairs, and therefore you can't do a Kuban Pesach for them unless they agree to it. Hey, Tet, 89. If there is a group of people who are having the Paschal Lamb, and one person is taking a little bit too much, you know, it's a joint communal meal for this group of registered people, but some person, one person is hogging the food, taking more than their fair share. We are allowed to, the other members of the group are allowed to tell that person, take your spe specific portion, the amount allotted to you, and get out. And we don't want to eat with you anymore because you're taking too much. Okay. Sadi. 90. Tanya. Kol tfilot tfilatan bayom, balayla. All the people who have to go to the mikvah, they go to the mikvah during the daytime. However, a woman who was recovering from her status as Nida, or for that matter, a Yoledet who gave birth, their immersion is at night. 
Tanya, Yachol Tehei Tovot Mivod Yom. You might have thought that Anida should go to the mikveh while it is still the daytime on the seventh day of her impurity. The Talmud Lomar, Shivat Amim Tiyeb Nidata. Therefore, the Torah says, for seven days she shall be in her state of Nida. Tehei Nidata Kol Shiva, to teach you that for all seven days, including the totality of the seventh, she remains in that status and does not immerse in the waters of the ritual bath and the waters of the mikveh until the night of the eighth day. So after a full seven days have been completed. Amar 91, Sadi Amar. Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Ein osin chabura shekula gerim. We do not make a group, a chabura, for the Paschal Lamb, for the Kuban Pesach, that is composed entirely of converts. Why? Shema yidak de kubo psul. Maybe they'll be too exacting in the matter, and it will, it will result in an invalidation of the korban. There are two ways of approaching this piece of text. One is the view of Rashi. Rashi says, Mishum she'nan b'nei Torah, because the converts are unlikely to be thoroughly learned in Torah. Yachmaru, but they're still very religious and want to, be, want to do the right thing. They just don't know what the right thing is. So they will be needlessly strict. And they will negate the validity of the carbon needlessly, meaning the carbon actually was valid, but they were concerned that it wasn't. So as a matter of unnecessary piety, they will refuse to eat it. They'll invalidate their own korban, uh, contrary to the halacha. That's one perspective, the perspective of the convert being especially pious, even if not especially learned. But the other perspective is that maybe they're not so exacting in the matter, and they'll come to eat it even though it's actually pasul. So either way, whether out of uh, super-duper leniency or super-duper stringency, do not make a group which is entirely composed of gerim, but rather have a mixed group of some native-born sons of Israel and some who joins from the outside. Everyone have a great week.